So before we try to speak on Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma, do you have a little clock or something? I can see the time. My revered spiritual master, he instructed me that before you speak on Bhagavatam, you should offer prayers to Bhagavatam because Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Sarvashroi, that just as Krishna is Vibhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so also is Srimad Bhagavatam. Prati shloki, prati akshari, nanata koi, each and every verse, each and every syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam has unlimited meaning. So in the same way we offer prayers to Krishna, we also offer prayers to Srimad Bhagavatam. This takes about five minutes. If you know some of the verses, please recite with me. Narayanam namaskritam naram shaiva narotamam Devim sadasyatim vyasam tato jayam udirayat Vedi Ramayane Shaiva Purane Bharate Tata Adavande Chamadhi Chahadi Sarvatra Gihite Mukam Karodi Vacha Lampangum Langayate Girim Yet Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurum Dinatadanam Paramananda Madhavam This is a song uh, they sing traditionally in Arissa it, almost every village in Arissa has what they call a, a Bhagavat Tungi, where people traditionally before television would come together every day to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is a song that they sing there traditionally. Paramananda he Madhava Padunga Luchi Makaranda Se Makaranda Panakori Anande bolo hari hari Harinka name vanda vela Pari kori be chaka dola Se chaka dolanka paraye Manamo rahu nirantare Manamo nirantare rahu Ha Krishna Boli Jiva Jao Ha Krishna Boli Jao Jiva Mote U Dada Radha Dava Mote U Dada Radha Dava Mote U Dada Radha Dava Dharma projita kaita vota padamonia matsuranam satam Vedyam vastava matta vastu shiva dam tapa trion mulanam Shimad bhagavate mahamune krite kim vapada ishvara Sadyo hidyavarudyate chukati bishu shu shu vistakshanat Nigamako pataro galitam falam shukamukada mitra dravasam yutam Pivata bhagavatam rasamalayam mohura hora sika buvi bavuka Anarto pasamam sakshad bhakti yogam adhoksaje Lokasya janato vidvams chakrisat vatta samhitam Yashyam vaishriyamanayam krishne parama purushe Bhakti rupadgate pamsa shoka moha vayapaha Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam Yasmin Paramaham Samekam Amalam Gyanam Param Giyate Tatra Gyana Vairagya Bhakti Sahitam Naiskam Yama Viskritam Tachchin Van Supaten Vicharana Paro Bhaktya Vumuchen Naraha Arto Yam Brahma Sutanam Bharatarta Vininaya Gayatri Bhashirupo So Vedarta Pari Brimita Sarva Vedeti Hasanam Saram Saram Samudritam Sarva Vedanta Saram He Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate Tadrasam Rita Tripta Shyamyam Yatra Svadvachri Kuchit Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup Shri Bhagavata Tate Veda Shashahoite Parama Mahatva Chari Veda Upanishade Jatakichu 
Tara Arta Lena Vyasa Korila Sanchaya Jehi Sute Jeru Vishaya Vachana Bhagavate Sehiru Slokani Bandana Jiveranistara Lagi Sutra Koilo Vyasa Maya Vadi Vashya Shunile Hoya Sarva Nasha Jaho Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Ashtane Ekanta Shayakoro Chaitanya Charane Bhagavata Jena Mane Sejavana Sama Tada Sasta Ache Janme Janme Prabhu Jama Bolo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam, the king of all literatures, Canto 9, Chapter 9, uh, the dynasty of Angsaman. Uh, text number 49. Yet tad brahma param sukshmam Yet tad brahma param sukshmam Asunyam sunya kolpitam Asunyam sunya kolpitam Bhagavan vasudevati Bhagavan Vasudevati Yam Grinanti Hi Sattvataha Yam Grinanti Hi Sattvataha Please repeat. Yat that which Tat such Brahma Param Parabrahmam the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Sukshmam, spiritual, beyond all material conceptions. Asunyam, not impersonal or void. Sunyakalpitam, imagined to be void by less intelligent men. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, Krishna, Iti, Thus, Yam, Whom, Grinanti, Sing about, He, Indeed, Sattvataha, Pure Devotees. Translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudev Krishna is extremely difficult to understand for unintelligent men who accept him as impersonal a void, which he's not. The Lord is therefore understood and sung about by pure devotees. Please repeat. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudev Krishna is extremely difficult to understand 
for unintelligent men who accept him as impersonal or void, which he is not. The Lord is therefore understood and sung about by pure devotees. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1 2 11, Vedanti tat tattva vidas, tattvam yad gyanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti sabjate. No translation. The absolute truth is realized in three phases as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the origin of everything. Brahman is a partial representation of Bhagavan, and Vasudev, the super soul living everywhere and in everyone's heart, is also an advanced realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But when one comes to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva Savam Itti, when one realizes that Vasudeva is both Paramatma and the impersonal Brahman, he is then in perfect knowledge. Krishna is therefore described by Arjuna as Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. The words Param Brahma refer to the shelter of the impersonal Brahman and also of the all-pervading Supersoul. When Krishna says, Chakvadeham Punarjanma Naiti Mamiti, this means that the perfect devotee, after perfect realization, returns home back to Godhead. Maharaj Katvanga accepted the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and because of his full surrender, he achieved perfection. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the ninth canto, ninth chapter, the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Dynasty of Angsuman. Gora Graganya Gana Gota Goloru Haram Goranga Guda Tama Gopya Da Kopa Briksham Gopala Gada Rati Dham Yeti Singha Gora Govinda Deshi Kavaram Satatam Namami so this verse is describing the realization, the quality of the realization of Maharaj Katvanga. And it's speaking, as Srila Prabhupada is describing, elaborating in the purport about Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And how Brahman and Paramatma were only partial features of the Absolute. In his Chaitanya Sikshamrita, Srila Thakur Bhaktivinoda uh, describes this in a very nice way. He says that when someone uh, begins to practice gyan, then the fruit of that activity is they realize the Lord as Brahman. That's the fruit of gyan. When someone practices Astanga Yoga, the fruit of that sadhana is they may realize the Lord in his Paramatma feature. But Krishna, he says, Bhakti Mama Bijanati, Yavanyas Chesmi Tattvata. The only way that I can be understood in Tattva as Purna Brahma, Bhagavan, Krishna is through Bhakti. And Thakur Bhaktivinod says that persons who try to approach the Lord through Gyan or through yoga, Bhakti Devi is not satisfied. Our Acharyas have described that actually any fruit that they may get from their Gyan, from their yoga, actually comes because there's a little contact with Bhakti. They're reading some Shastra and meditating on Brahman. And Brahman is also one of the names for Krishna. 
who is Prabhupada is noting here, is described by Arjuna as Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitam Idam Uttamam. He's the last limit of Brahman in the Jagannath Ashtakam. It's described Param Brahma Pira Kuvalaya Dulot Fula Nayano Nibasi Niladio Nahita Chadano Nanta Sirasi Rasanandi Radha Sarasavapur Alingana Sukho Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bhavatume That that Jagannath who is Rasanandi Radha Sarasavapur Alingana Suk He's getting so much suk, so much happiness because he's fully embraced by Srimati Radharani. It's that Krishna who's Param Brahma. Anyone else is Aparna. We know from Ishopanishad and Bhaktivinoda Thakur's commentary. They're incomplete. But Krishna, when he's with Srimati Radharani, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Purna. Because Srimati Radharani is there. He's Param, uh, Param Dhamma. He's uh, Param Brahma, the topmost manifestation of Brahman. So, someone may practice uh, Jnana Yoga or Karma Yoga. They may practice uh, Astanga Yoga. But all those processes are ultimately dependent on some little touch of bhakti. And it's only through bhakti that Krishna can be fully realized. And this Brahman becomes very, very insignificant. Thakur Bhaktivinod has composed an invocation verse for his Kalyana Kopa Turu, which is very beautiful. Vande Vrindantave Chandram, I offer my Vandana to that Muna Vrindavan. Vande Vrindantave Chandram, who's Radhikakshi Mahotsavam who for Radhika Akshi, the eyes, the Akshi of Radharani, is a great festival. Radhika Akshi Mahotsavam, Brahmatmananda, Dikari. He puts to shame this Brahman. Brahmatmananda, Dikari, Purnananda, Rasalayam. He's complete in all Ananda. He's complete in all Rasa. This is Krishna Bhagavan. But he's only known bhakti maam abhijanati yavan yaschasmitattva. He's only known through bhakti. And other persons who uh, are consider him to be sunya, this verse is saying he's asunya. He has a form. But foolish people, they can't understand. And why can't they understand? This is an important question, which this verse addresses Bhagavan Vasudeva T. To understand Bhagavan Vasudev, Yam Grinanti Hi Sattvataha. You must, or Srila Prabhupada says in one lecture, you have no other choice. You must approach a person, a devotee. Because to get to understand Krishna requires bhakti. And bhakti stu bhagavan bhakta, uh, that bhakti comes from association with the devotee. As Krishna Das Kabraj Goswami says, um, bhakti jama mulohoi sadhu sangha. The, the, the birthplace of bhakti is sadhu sangha. This is a very simple thing, but a very, very esoteric thing, a very confidential thing. Because most people are too self-absorbed to understand it. They're thinking uh, of themselves as being Brahman. They're thinking, I'm, I'm really everything. Mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. Or they're thinking that the purpose of my life, I have to get it all together and I'm going to have to practice karma, which means vanasham dharma, or what Bhaktivinoda Thakur calls asura vanasham, or demoniac vanasham, as opposed to daivi vanasham, in which Krishna is in the center. Hmm? Or they're thinking, I have to do some yoga because I want to realize the Paramatma. Or even we see smartas. Some of we have so many in Arissa and Jagannath Puri, where we live. And many of them are chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. They're worshiping the deities of Radha Krishna. 
But there's a vast difference between them and Gaudiya Vaishnavas, even though some of them also worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and even read Srimad Bhagavatam. This was noted by Maharaj Prataparudra uh, in the um, 12th chapter of Madhulila of Chaitanya Charitam Rita, the, uh, where he was watching the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arriving in Jagannath Puri. And he became confused. He was very eager to know who they were. And Sarva Boma was explaining, oh, this is Advaita Charya. This is Nityananda Prabhu. This is Haridas Thakur. And he was describing all the wonderful associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Maharaj Prataparudra, who was a Vaishnav, whose father is Maharaj Purushottam Dev, great Vaishnav, devotee of the Lord, he became confused. He said, wait a minute. They're not behaving properly. Because you, when you come to Jagannath Puri, you're supposed to shave your head. You fast, you take bath in the ocean, there's this punch, uh, Panchatirtha you have to visit, and then you go straight to see Lord Jagannath. And they're not doing that. They're not shaving their head, they're not, they're not fasting, they're not going to see Lord Jagannath, they're going straight to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he's giving them Jagannath Prasad, and they're immediately taking Jagannath Prasad. This is not right. How do we understand this? And Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya explained to them, they're a little different. And in the course of that discussion also, Maharaj Prataparudra, he said, you know, I've seen many kirtans. To this day, practically every village in Orissa has Hare Krishna kirtan. And especially, it's a wonderful thing, every Akadasi, wherever I'm at in Orissa, we travel and do research in places. Wherever we're at on Akadasi, you hear 24-hour kirtan, Hare Krishna mantra. But what is their conception? For the vast part, they're thinking they want to get liberation at best, or sometimes it's even impersonal liberation they're thinking about. But for the devotees of Krishna, as Srila Prabhupada described in one of his 1972 lectures here in Nectar Devotion here in Vrindavan, he said the devotees, they don't even aspire for love of God. But they see Krishna as Savya Vastu the supreme object of service, and there's no question of selfishness in them. It's a very interesting point. For so many other sadhikas, there's so much selfishness. If you're an impersonalist, your selfishness is everything, because that's what you think you are. I'm everything. You have the, the biggest false ego, although you think you're giving up your ego. <laughs> If you're a yogi, you also have some selfishness. You're thinking, how am I going to make advancement? And even we see those Vaishnavas who are not fixed upon service of the Lord, not seeing the Lord as the object of service. There's also some selfishness in them. What can you do? There's some selfishness in us. But we should at least understand what is the siddhanta, what is the goal the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says, na dhanam na janam na sundaram kavitam va jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani shri bhavatad bhaktir ohita ki tvai. I just want to serve you. Birth after birth, this is my desire. But how can we understand such a thing? It's not possible on our own. We have to approach a devotee. Krishna, therefore, in the Adi Purana, he says, Ye me bhakta jana parta, na me bhaktas tate janaha. That person who says he's my devotee, I've seen the t shirts they sell across the street. He says, I, and there's a big heart, I love Krishna. Krishna says, I have no idea who those guys are. Ye me bhakta jana parta, na me bhaktas tate janaha. That person who says he's my devotee, he's not my devotee. But madbhaktanam chaye bhaktas te me bhakta tamo mata. That person who's a devotee of my devotee, he's my real devotee. This is the principle of bhakti. I can read a book about you. I can find some information about you on the internet. I can try to develop a relationship with you through what I've read. I can try to understand you as a person through what I've read through someone else. And I might understand something, your birth date, your favorite food, 
or this or that, but I'm not really going to understand you until I come close to you in an affectionate, loving relationship. Because it's only through that affection, that love, that you'll actually show yourself. If if you're going to school and someone is coming to you and is a great sycophant and pandering and offering obeisances to you because you're so impressed with how much money you have or how powerful you are and they want to be your friend, what kind of friendship is that? It's weird. If someone approaches you and they're flattering you and saying so many nice things because they want to get some money from you. Where I come from, we call that a con man. And it hurts the heart. It hurts the relationship. Even in the material realm, to understand someone, the only possible way is through devotion, through love and friendship. And what to speak of that personality that we can't see. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur has written an article which he published in Sajjana Toshini called Silanthropism, published in The Harmonist, excuse me. And in that article he describes uh, Silanthropism, it's a big English word, huh? maybe not all of you know that word, uh, but it means when someone thinks that they can understand the absolute truth in a material way, or they think that the absolute truth is something material. So he says, when someone tries to understand the absolute truth with their panchagyan indriya, which are the same senses which are binding us to this material world, the same senses that are binding me, that are trapping me in this material world, I'm trying to use to understand something beyond the senses. It doesn't work. And he gives an example. He says, just like someone living in India is trying to understand London, He said, you can understand something by reading a book, but you need to meet someone who's come from there, who can tell you what the weather is like, what the people are like, what the culture is like, someone who has experienced that, and then you have some connection with it. And therefore this verse says, yam granati hi sattvata, that Krishna is known to those sattva janas, those pure devotees who are singing about him. And otherwise, Krishna can't be known. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mahadev Lord Shiva, who's Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu, the greatest of Vaishnavas, he describes a humvedi shukavedi vyasavedi navediva, bhaktiya bhagavatam grayam nabudi anachatikaya. He says, I understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadev Goswami understands. It's a long story because Shukadev once heard Bhagavatam from Lord Shiva in Bhubaneshwara Rissa, it's a long story. Vyasa Vedina Vediva, whether Vyasadeva understands or not, I don't know, I can't really say. That's a very startling statement. Vyasadeva knows a lot. He studied a lot of books. But Shivadi saying, I don't know if he understands or not because I don't know who he's heard from. He didn't hear from me. And then he explains further, Bhaktya Bhagavatam Grai, I'm not Buddha, I'm not Chatikaya. That to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, you must have Bhakti. That's the only process. Jaho Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavarastana Ekanta Ashrayakara Chaitanya Charani. Supdhamada Goswami in Jagannath Puri. He recommended, if you want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, you must, you have no choice, you must take shelter of a devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, you can't really understand Srimad Bhagavatam. But we're so stubborn. We're so impersonal. As Srila Prabhupada said in one lecture in um, 1972, I believe, in Mumbai, he says that, Some people say, this is word for word, some people say, what is the use of accepting guru? And Prabhupada commented, of course they have a very bad experience. When I heard that, I thought, wow, Prabhupada predicted the future. Just see. What is the use of accepting guru? Of course they have a very bad experience. Prabhupada said, they think, I'll just read the book. And Prabhupada says, they may read Bhagavad Gita a hundred times. They may read it a thousand times but they won't understand a single word unless they approach a person. Acharya Javan Purusho Veda 
Chandogya Upanishad very emphatically states, if you want to understand Vedic literature, Acharya Jivam Purusho, you have to approach Guru. You have to have connection with some person. And so Shivji is stating, it's Aham Vedmi, Shukha Vedi, Vyasa Vedi, Navediva, Bhaktiya Bhagavatam Grayam. To understand Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakti is required. Now, Buddha, not by dint of your intelligence. Once I was requested by the devotees in Iskam Bhubaneshwar to give a lecture at a Pandal program in rural Arissa somewhere. The governor of Arissa was there and the king of Pori, and there was about 25,000 people who came. It was quite a big program. They sent a car for us, and I get in the car. And there's another one of the speakers who was in the car. And this man was amazing. He was a Sanskrit professor at Utkal University, university there in Bhubaneswar. And at a young age, I don't know, maybe eight or 10, he had memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita. And as we were sitting in the car, he was quoting verses from Srimad Bhagavatam like the wind and Chaitanya Chaitamita, and I was amazed to see Ujjali Lamani and Alita Madhav and so many Goswami literatures. Such an amazing personality. Maybe he knew more verses than all of us put together. But as we continued in our discussion, I could understand something about the level of his consciousness. It's described by... Um, Gopinatha Charja, he quotes a verse from the 10th canto to Sarvabhoma. Atapite deva padambuja dvaya pasadale sanagrihita eva hi. He said, You can't understand Sarvabhoma Bhatta Charja, even though your Brihaspati avatar, the incarnation of Brihaspati, the guru of the demigods, you can't understand Srimad Bhagavatam because you don't have the mercy of a devotee. And suddenly this big scholar, that I got a chance to ride with, started sharing some of his ecstatic realizations. He told me, actually, Jagannath is really Buddha. I wasn't so inspired by that. And then he started explaining to me, actually, fish eating is very good for the brain, good for memory. I was less impressed about that. Huh? And then I saw later he was smoking cigarettes and things. So what is the value of his vast knowledge we can read Srimad Bhagavatam, do a test, go to downtown London, Soho Street, where the devotees are doing wonderful service of Harinam there, and find one of the denizens on the street who are laying there drunken, and go and give him a copy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hey man, wake up, check it out. He rolls over and maybe he can kind of read the cover of the book before he passes out. What does he understand of Srimad Bhagavatam? Go then to the university where a group of students are studying Sanskrit and Hinduism and maybe they're studying Srimad Bhagavatam and sit next to one of the young boys who has a very beautiful girl next to him and he's studying Srimad Bhagavatam but he's looking at the girl the entire time. What does he understand of Srimad Bhagavatam? Uh -huh. Go to the professor there at the university like my friend who's smoking and eating meat uh -huh. and see what he understands about Srimad Bhagavatam, even though he's, he's giving class on Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, come and listen to a new bhakta in the Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan and see what he understands about Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, if you're very fortunate, go and speak with Radha Govinda Maharaj and see what he understands of Srimad Bhagavatam. He's been studying his whole life. It's not just black and white. Vrindavan mm -hmm. Das Thakur says, Maha Chintya Bhagavata, that this Srimad Bhagavatam is completely inconceivable. And he says that those persons, uh, Bhagavata Bhuji Hena Jara Achigyan, Sena Jani Kabu Bhagavatera Praman, those persons who say, I understand Srimad Bhagavatam. I came to the VIHE, I study, I have a Bhakti Vaibhav degree. I understand Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not just because you passed a test, you have some information that you've understood Srimad Bhagavatam, because Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna. And Krishna and Srimad Bhagavatam are only understood through devotion, 
Bhaktya Bhagavatam Grayam. Na buddhiya, not by dint of your intelligence. Na chatikaya, not even by taking help of the commentaries. There's so many different commentaries in Srimad Bhagavatam. And some of our Mayavadi friends, some of our scholar friends, they're also reading those commentaries. But what are they understanding? They're not understanding Krishna because they're not approaching Krishna through a person. Therefore, yam grinati hi sattvataha. This verse is describing, if you want to understand Purna Brahma, Bhagavan, Krishna, Sevaka Bhagavan, Krishna, you have to go through a person. You have no choice. You may understand something, but what will your empiric study of even the bhakti literatures give you? if you're not going through a person. This is Raja Vidya, this is Raja Guyam. It's the king of knowledge, it's the most confidential. But that thing which is a king and greatest of knowledge must be pratyaksavagamam dharamyam susukam kartamavyam. It must be practically realized. And that means we have to approach a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes in his commentary to this verse in Chaitanya Chaitamrita where Lord Shiva says that I understand the Bhagavatam Vyasa, Vyasa, I don't know if he does or not, Shuka understands. Prabhupada says, according to the Vedic injunction, yesya devi para bhakti yata devi tata guru, all Vedic literatures maintain that Srimad Bhagavatam has to be learned from the person Bhagavat. And to understand it, one has to engage in pure devotional service. Srimad Bhagavatam cannot be understood by so-called erudite scholars or grammarians. One who has developed pure Krishna consciousness and has served the pure devotee, the spiritual master, can understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Others cannot. Very emphatically, Srila Prabhupada states this. But some persons who are upamedasa, they have less intelligence, who are very self-centered, who are very uh, impressed with their ability to understand things, their intelligence. They'll think, what is the use of that? I don't need to do that. I'll just read the book. And there's some impersonalism there. And they can't really understand Krishna as a person. We speak about mamata and uh, our charis, mamata means when we have some conception that this person belongs to me. And in Majjhilila chapter 8 in Ramanam the Samvad, uh, Ramananda Roy is suggesting so many conclusions one after another to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu keeps saying, Eho Bhaya, Agi Kahaar, that sounds external. This Vanasham, that's external. Sarva Dharma Pritya, that's also external. Tell me more. And, but it's not until he comes to the point where he begins to speak about mamata. When I think that Krishna belongs to me. But how can I do that? How can I say Krishna belongs to me? Is it just some kind of speculation? Hmm? Um, what is the verse in Majjhilila chapter 8? Gyane prayasa udapasya namanta eva. Jivanti sat mukaritam bhavadi avartam stani stita shruti gatam tanu van manobir ye prayaso jita jito paisitai stri lokyam. This is the first verse in Ramananda Samvad that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. He says, Gyane prayasa. Give up all your gyan, all your speculation. You think you can read a book and understand Krishna, the person. It's not possible. Gyane prayasam udapasya namante. But rather, uh, you want to hear from the satmuk, the lotus mouth of a devotee. And he says, stani stita, when you have that opportunity, just stay where you're at. Srila Prabhupada told the devotees here, stay where you're at. Somebody complained, the Bhagavatam classes are not very good. Devotees, they don't know very many verses. They're just saying, you're not your body over and over again. Or they're just trying to collect money. So Prabhupada, I want to go. Some devotee was writing him like this outside. There's some other very learned persons. And Prabhupada said, no. If the classes are not so good, then you give class. Mm -hmm. But you stay. Stani stita. Stay. What does that mean? It's not a sectarian statement. But it means when you found guru, 
You stay where you're at. You're hungry. Okay, when someone puts a plate of food in front of you, you don't have to run around looking anymore. Just sit down and eat what you've got. And then your hunger will be satisfied. No, 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 I, I'm not sure this is the best food. I want to go somewhere else. And you keep running around and looking until you fall over dead from starvation. Because you don't eat what's been given in front of you. Stani sita shuti gatam tanuvan manobir. Shuti gatam, you hear tanuvan manobir with your body, mind, and words. And then ye praya so jita jito paisi traishi lokim. That personality Christian who's ajita, who can't be conquered, he becomes conquered by someone who simply hears Srimad Bhagavatam from the right source. In the 1800s, there was one devotee named Radharaman Ghosh. And he was living in um, the capital of Bangladesh, in Dhaka. And he was a businessman, he's a Vaishnav, but he was not so happy uh, with his life making money and taking care of his family. He wanted to come to Vrindavan. And so when he got a little older, he arranged things with his eldest son, and then he left, and he came to Vrindavan. And Vrindavan was quite a bit different then. And he was just wandering around through the forest chanting japa. And one day, he was going through a forest in Vrindavan, and he heard a sound coming somewhere nearby. It was the sound of someone reciting a verse. Nigamakopaturo galitam falam sukamukadamitra dravasam yutam pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam muhuroho rasika buvi bhavuka. He was hearing someone reciting Srimad Bhagavatam all alone in that dense forest. And the person was crying. And Radharaman was a little curious. So very quietly he went there and he saw an old man sitting in front of a tamal tree, like this tree, crying and reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. Radharaman thought, this is pretty good. I can go for a Bhagavatam class today. So he sat down and he listened. And when he saw the old man was finishing and closing the book, then Radharaman very quietly got up and left. And he came back again the next day about the same time. The old man was there. And again, very quietly, he sat down and listened. He started doing this every day. The old man had no idea that he was there. After some days, when he entered into that forest grove, he stepped on a twig and made a little noise. And the old man just kind of turned him and waved, come, come, sit down. And he told him, you sit and listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, you'll be the second listener. <laughs> and Radharaman, he's looking around. There's nobody else here. It's only me. Huh? Who's this? He, and, and the old man says, no, no, Krishna is coming to hear. And Radharaman goes, that, those Hare Krishna people, they're a little touched in the head, you know. Huh? And sure, sure, right, right, Krishna's coming. No, no, really. And so every day they were reciting Bhagavatam. First, second, third canto, tenth canto, eleventh, twelfth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. And finally, that old man finished reciting the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. And as he finished the last verse, a very amazing thing happened. He was sitting in front of this black tamal tree, and suddenly the tree started shaking. And a cracking sound started coming. And the tree split open. And Radharaman Ghosh is watching, this is pretty far out. And there was a very dazzling effulgence coming out from that tree. Uh -huh. And then the tree fell apart and he saw, standing there, with a flute to his lips and a very enchanting smile, was Krishna. And Radharaman Ghosh fell unconscious. It was a really good Srimad Bhagavatam class. Mm -hmm. And after some time, he regained external consciousness and he found that he was lying with his head on the lap of that old man and the old man was rubbing his head and he said, Radharaman, now you've seen my Radharaman. Now you should speak Srimad Bhagavatam for the pleasure of Krishna. This is our, this is our service. It's not for ourselves to become famous, to get wealth, to try to control people. Bhakti is a service. Hearing is a service. 
We want to hear for the pleasure of Guru and Garanga. Everything that we do, it should be for their pleasure. Example given in, in nectar devotion is Daruka, Krishna's chariot driver. He was fanning Krishna once. And as he was fanning Krishna, Daruka became so ecstatic, he was crying. Tears were streaming from his eyes, his body was shaking. And Daruka became really annoyed and he started praying to Krishna, Krishna, please, could you make these ecstatic symptoms go away? Because it's causing, it's impeding my service to you. My service to you is everything. This is not for my pleasure. So that old man told Radharama, now you recite Srimad Bhagavatam for the pleasure of Krishna. And Radharama said, well, where should I go? The, the tamal tree is broken now. Should I find another tamal tree? Where should I go? And perhaps he quoted this, at that time a verse from the Gita Mahatmya, Bhagavat Mahatmya, of the Skanda Purana. Srimad Bhagavatam Shastram Yatra Bhagavatari Yada Kirtate Shrigate Chapi Shri Krishna's Tatra Nishtitam. He said that wherever and whenever devotees come together to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, you should know for certain Krishna goes, comes running there. Krishna's present. This is why Vaishnav Sangha is so powerful. Because if we follow the formula, the simple formula that Srila Prabhupada gave, come together and do kirtan, recite Srimad Bhagavatam, then Krishna will come running. Now you may ask, huh? well, do you have to recite the whole Bhagavatam before Krishna comes? Or like, when does he come? Half the Bhagavatam? Or the next verse describes Srimad Bhagavatam Yatra, Shlokam, Shlokartam Evacha. Just one verse. Even Shlokarta, even half a verse. And Krishna comes running. And an amazing thing, He's not alone. Tatrapi Bhagavan Krishna Balavi Bir Virajate. He comes, Balavi Bir Virajate, with the gopis to hear that. This is the wonderful quality of Vaishnav Sangha. This is the wonderful quality of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from the devotees. Krishna comes running there. This is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This was Srila Prabhupada's desire. And we may have problems. We definitely have problems. Uh -huh. But if we simply recite Srimad Bhagavatam every day, those problems will go away. What is it? Uh, mm -hmm. this, remember the verse. This Bhagavatam creates a revolution. Tadvagvi sargo janataga viplavo. You may have problems. Maybe the person who organizes the Bhagavatam class, he's, we have doubts about him, I don't know. So maybe the class is not good. But don't worry. If you just hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day, then it'll create a revolution. And if there's a bad person doing a bad thing, he'll be pushed out. Uh -huh. The eighth canto Srimad Bhagavatam says, you may have some problems. Hmm? Mantra, uh, mantra tas tantra tas chidra. Chidra means fault. Mantra tas tantra tas chidram. Desha kalaha vastuta. You may have some chidra, some fault in your organized religion. Okay, let's be honest. Huh? There may be some desha kalaha vastu, according to time, place, and object. There may be some fault, but don't worry about it. Sarvam karoti nis chidram. All that chidra goes away. Anu sankirtanam tava by the chanting of the holy name. Srila Prabhupada knew there were problems. Don't think he didn't know. Read in the folio, read the conversation books. There were so many problems, but Srila Prabhupada knew there's a secret weapon. There's two secret weapons in this Hare Krishna movement. And as long as those two things are there, everything is okay. And Krishna will appear. What are those two secret weapons? Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Why are they secret? Because those Bahir Mukjanas, external persons, like our smarter friends in Arisa, they don't take it so seriously. They recite Srimad Bhagavatam, as Prabhupada described sometimes, to get money as a professional speaker of the Bhagavatam. And they're thinking that's what's important. Or they're speaking to become famous. They don't understand Srimad Bhagavatam. They're not going to get the result of Srimad Bhagavatam. Or someone else is doing kirtan. Mm, I'm a, the most amazing singer. 
and I can play so many tunes, and those beautiful girls in the back, and they're watching, and sooner or later, I'm going to catch one. Huh? He's fishing. Huh? He's trying to catch a nice fish with his voice, and it looks like he's chanting. Huh? So those persons, uh, Thakur Bhaktivinod, he says those persons, they're kalicheyas. Ela to eka kalichela. Tilak napi, kunti mala. They're having tilak on their face and kunti mala. But they're actually cheating. But who's really cheating who? Bhaktivinoda says that the first obstacle in Braj is Putana, and she represents the false guru. And uh, it's a long discussion. But Putana, Jiva Goswami says, she came to Braj. The Bhagavatam says, a very horrible thing, she was killing all the babies in Braj. Think about that. Jiva Goswami comments in Lagu Vaishnava Tosha, and he says, how does that? She's killing the babies, the sons and daughters of the bridge bhasis? And Jiva Goswami says, no, no, no. Uh, by the potency of yoga maya, Putana didn't, didn't see those children of the bridge bhasi devotees, but she was just killing the sons and daughters of the followers of Kangsa. In other words, Putana, who was coming for her own selfish purpose, Putana was tricked. And Krishna, she thought she was really pulling one over on Krishna, but Krishna tricked her and Krishna used her. And so in the same way, there's so many little Putanas sometimes in our society, maybe inside of all of us, we have our little Putanas, little demoniac nature. But those Putanas are easily destroyed. Tadvadvi sargo janataga viplavo. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Anusankirtanam tava. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And by engaging in these activities with the devotees, Bhagavan Vasudevi ti yamgri nati hi sattvata. This verse describes Krishna will become present. Krishna will be present in this movement. We should have full confidence. So we'll stop there. I have a feeling, I, there's no clock, it's very hard. I have a feeling I've gone over time. Yes, I have. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Samabeda Bhakta Binda ki, Gopremanandi Hari Hari Bo, Vamcha Kalpadaru Bhishcha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha, Patitanam Pabhanibhyo, Vaishnavibhyo Namona Mahananda Kodi Vaishnavrinda Ki.